So, one of the most common questions that I get asked is, What? Is you got a question? What is your training plan? What is your training split? Or just, what do you do? What are you doing? And because I was getting kind of tired of typing up my whole plan to everyone who was DMing me, I actually put it in my latest book, Resurrecting Your Gains, in full. And we're also going to be going over it in this video. So the program is called Ravage. Ravage Egypt. And it is available in the ebook. However, it is also available for free in full on Boost Camp. They actually reached out to me and they wanted to put it on their app and I happily agreed. And so huge shout out to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. Now on a more personal note, I've been running this channel full time for about three years. I still don't have advertisements, YouTube AdSense on the video. And so all of the videos are not just free, but they are ad free as well. I've been monetizing through coaching as well as through my book. So this is the first sponsor that I've had on the channel. And this is not through a lack of interest or opportunities. I have had literally hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people wanting to put affiliate links in my descriptions or putting various products or apparel or supplements, you name it, I have gotten emails about it. So 99% of the time they get deleted right away, right to jail. Jail. Get out of here. However, Boost Camp's email actually stood out for a few reasons. First, Eric Helms is an advisor and if there is a sound moral compass for the fitness industry, it would be Eric Helms. They also have programs from a wide variety of people that I highly respect. No fake naturals here, no test boosters, no fat burners, nothing like that. So they have programs from Greg Knuckles, Menno Henselmans, Johnny Candido, Alexander Bromley, Alberto Nunez, Peter Kachatarian, and way, way more. And their mission aligns very, very closely with my own, putting out good information that helps get people jacked. All right, so let's get into the program. Again, I've been running this for about a year and a half and the gains have been very, very visible and I've been very, very happy with this split. And I actually don't really have any plans on changing it, even if arms are no longer a weakness by any means. So it is a legs, torso, bro day split. So day one, you have your squats and your hinges. Day two, you have presses, pushes, pulls, and rows. So basically working the chest, the back, and a little bit of shoulders. And then the third day is what I like to call a bro day. So it's essentially arms and shoulder isolation. Now I know some of you might see this program and think that it is a lot of volume. Keep in mind, this is actually a toned down version. So I am fully aware that I am a workhorse. I am very, very resilient. I can essentially dedicate most of my life to the gym and recovering from the gym. And so this version is actually less volume than what I typically do. Also keep in mind, this is six days per week. And so if you are a beginner, if you're just getting into this kind of thing, uh, I would suggest a different program that is three or maybe four days per week. I also have another program on there, three full body days per week, which might be more your flavor. All right, so let's get into the first day. First day, legs. We're gonna start out with a quad dominant squat pattern. I use a Smith machine hack squat. But if you have access to a normal hack squat, or if you have access to something like a pendulum squat, I think those are good alternates as well. You're gonna start with a top set of five to 10 reps. So this is fairly heavy. Make sure that you're controlling the eccentric. Make sure that you're not just dive bombing and then slamming out of the bottom position, because that might mean that you can't progress week to week and you're just gonna to get too beaten up. You're gonna follow that with two to three sets, up to you, auto-regulate here. I would start on the lower side of things and then maybe add in the third set as you feel like you were recovering well and if you had a plateau of 10 to 15 reps. So this is gonna be pretty brutal. I would, again, control that eccentric. You wanna be feeling your quads on the way down. You can let your hips shift back a little bit if you need to but try to keep them forward, try to keep the knees forward, and try to keep the movement in the quads. Next up, back extensions, very, very lower back friendly, great overall posterior chain movement. We're in the hamstrings, the glutes, as well as the spinal erectors. Two to four sets, eight to 15 reps. I know that's a pretty big rep range, but most people are able to progress on these 
fairly quickly, and so having a bigger rep range sort of accommodates that. You could put the bar on the ground, you could put the bar on your back, you could start with body weight only or use dumbbells if you want, up to you, as long as it is challenging. And you can also take these pretty close to failure, unlike a lot of hinges. Up next, we have walking lunges, two to four sets of 20 to 30 total steps. Again, start on the lower side of things. If you start off with four sets of walking lunges, near failure, you're gonna have a hell of a time the next day, probably in the gluteus maximus region. And then we're gonna finish up with seated hamstring curls, two to three sets of eight to 12 reps. And here I want you to take these to failure and then put in maybe two, three, four partial range of motion reps where you are attempting to get full range of motion but you are failing miserably. All right, day two, we have the upper body day. We're gonna alternate between close grip Larson presses and narrow neutral pull downs, each one three to four sets. The close grip bench presses are gonna be six to eight reps, and the narrow neutral pull downs are going to be eight to 12 reps. Now, ideally, you would be alternating between them, but I fully realize that if your gym is busy, this might not be possible. And so uh, if that is not possible, just do all the bench presses, finish those up, and then move on to pull downs. Next up, we have another alternating set, Smith Machine Reverse Grip Bench Presses. Fantastic upper chest movement, along with wide overhand pull downs. These are both great movements. Make sure you set the safety supports in the Smith Machine. And these are both for two to three sets as well. Then we have the third alternating set, Cable crossovers alternated with one arm machine rows. For the cable crossovers, you could do high to low to work more low chest, low to high to work more upper, or middle to middle to get a little bit of everything. For the one arm machine rows, if you want more lats, you can set the machine to where you are driving the elbow down. If you want a little bit more traps, a little bit more mid back, you can pull a little bit higher so you're more like wrapping around and using that scapular retraction a little bit more. And then we're gonna finish up with some standing cable pullovers. You could use a rope, you could use a bar, you could use one of those small handles that allows a little bit more tuck. You could use a variety of attachments as well, you know, just go by feel. And this is gonna be a fantastic lat blaster. All right, next up, the first bro day. Now this is not my favorite day, but I have found it to be instrumental in bringing up the arms. If you don't have an arm day, you can obviously still grow your arms in most cases, but I do think having a focused day where you're really doing a lot of isolation work is a good idea. So we're gonna start out with dumbbell hammer curls and rope pushdowns. You can do them with one rope or with two long ropes in order to get a little bit more of the long head. This is up to you. You can also alternate between them. Maybe you can do one week with a short rope, one week with a long rope, Totally fine there. This is mostly personal preference. For the hammer curls, you can use a little bit of oomph, but don't get too sloppy. You know, if you are getting sloppy in the last few reps, not a problem, although I would say probably better to keep it somewhat strict and just use partials. But if you are flailing around from the very first rep, you're just not gonna get very much out of this. So check the ego and make sure you're getting quality reps and quality sets here. Next up, we have two of my all-time favorite arm movements, incline dumbbell curls, as well as overhead triceps cable extensions. Now, why are these not first? Why are these not, you know, the first thing that you do if these are such good movements? Well, I found that hammer curls are actually better for warming up the elbows, uh, especially for higher reps, and pushdowns are also good to get a lot of blood in the elbow. These are more contraction focused movements and you probably want to start with those and then you move to the more stretch focused movements. And I highly advise to take both of these to failure. There's no reason to use reps and reserve on curls or extensions. It's called a bro day for a reason. Next, we're gonna move on to cable lateral raises. These are absolutely fantastic. I think I actually prefer these over dumbbells nine times out of 10. They get a better stretch. You can do partials a little bit more easily. There's more constant tension, etc. And I would take these to failure as well. And then you can also toss in some partials as well, or perhaps even some isometrics where you go to failure, up, 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 up. You can't get it all the way up and you just hold it 
as high as you can until you know you're trying as hard as you can and then you're just failing and ah oh no that's the sound of muscle growing and then finally we have upright rows now some people might be surprised that this is so late in the workout considering it is the most compound movement here i want you to do two to three sets of 15 to 20 reps which is also maybe higher reps than some people might expect uh, but i find that going lighter on these when you're pre-exhausted is a good idea they can be hard on the shoulders for some people, and so lightening the load, having them pre-fatigued is probably a good idea here. Play around with your grip, play around with how high you pull. This is a movement that will probably take some experimentation. Next up for the second leg day, we're doing high bar back squats, and I want you to do them either with squat shoes or heels elevated on small plates or a mat, or possibly both. So you're doing them plat style, very, very upright, very, very strict. I have fairly long femurs, and so I need to be very cognizant of staying upright, keeping the knees forward, and using quads instead of hips to move the weight. So probably for this movement more than any other, keep the ego out of it. Don't even think about it as a back squat, because you're just gonna compare the numbers to your normal back squat, and you're not gonna be targeting the right area. So, Keep the weight light, stay upright, keep the knees forward, and profit. Next up, we have a Romanian deadlift, two to three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pretty standard stuff here, nothing special. Tried and true movement. It's gonna build your entire posterior chain. Keep in mind, it's not just a hamstring movement. It's also gonna be quite a bit of spinal erector, as well as lats and traps. Then we're moving on to hip thrusts, two to three sets, 12 to 20 reps. Here I want you to go to failure, to where you can't quite get that top range of motion, and then add in a few partials, trying to get as high as you can. Then we're gonna move on to an alternated set, seated hamstring curls and leg extensions. Again, pretty standard stuff. Two to three sets here, just do one and the other and then rest, or do one then rest then do the other. Uh, this should not be too cardiovascularly taxing anyway, so either is okay. Torso day number two, we're going to be alternating a normal bench press, just a normal, standard, strict barbell bench press, boring but tried and true, with a wide neutral pull down. You could also do pull ups here if you want. If you have access to a wide neutral pull down, that would be viable. And the same goes for the other torso day. If you want to do pull ups instead of pull downs, totally fine, as long as you are strong enough to get in the correct rep range with full range of motion. Then we're moving on to another alternated set, machine chest press with a Helms row. Now these are both fantastic movements. Some people think that machines are not as effective. They are absolutely worth including in your program. This is easy on the joints, great way to get an extra volume. And then a Helms row, it is chest supported, but not excessively so. So you should still be hinging the hips back. You should still be trying to keep most of your weight on your feet and then in your posterior chain. And then you're just lightly resting your chest on the bench. You're not just dumping everything forward. And so if you think that it's hurting your chest, you're probably keeping too much weight on the bench. And then the last alternating set is a seated dumbbell press with a cable row or chest supported row. Again, Surprise, surprise, each for two to three sets. I do think it is worth including pressing in your overall program. And if you skip it and you're completely missing out on this movement pattern, that's probably not a good idea. You want to be strong in every plane of movement. And then for the final bro day, we're going to be doing hammer curls. You can do these with cables as well, with a rope attachment, totally fine as well as a leaning overhead extensions. There are a few different ways to do your cable extensions. You can do them standing with the attachment low behind you, which is fairly strict because you can't really, you know, cheat as much, or you can do them leaning away. So basically you have the attachment high, you take it down around, and then you do them like that. And then for the second pair of exercises, we're gonna be doing barbell curls. I encourage you to use easy bar here. It's just gonna be easier on the elbows for most people, as well as push downs. Again, you could do dual rope, you can do single rope, both okay. If you have a history of elbow issues or you feel like you need more of a warm up, you can move the push downs before the overhead extensions, totally fine there as well. Then we're moving on to machine lateral raises. If you have access to one, if you don't have access to one, 
then you could either do dumbbells or you could do more cable lateral raises as well. You could also do something like a Y raise where you have the cable station and then you're, you're, you're doing the YMCA thing, but only the first letter. Then we're moving on to Lou lateral raises. Fantastic side delt movement, also works the front delt, also works a lot of the mid back to keep the chest up as you rotate through. Also good for shoulder health and shoulder mobility. If you have trouble getting into an overhead press position, these are gonna be absolutely wonderful. Plus they get you jacked. Then we're gonna move on to cable rear delt raises, two to three sets of 15 to 20 reps. You could also do dumbbells here. I know some people are not a fan of those. I think those are a fine replacement as long as you allow yourself to go beyond failure. If you're doing a dumbbell lateral or a dumbbell rear delt raise and you're like, oh, I missed the very top part of the range of motion, guess the set's done, you messed up. You want to hit failure and then keep going and trying to get full range of motion. And then we're going to finish up this day with neck flexions. So you can put a plate on your forehead, use a towel or something to protect yourself along with wrist flexions and extensions. So each for just one to two sets, uh, just to get in some volume for the neck. If you don't want a bigger neck, then don't do this, duh. If you want a much bigger neck, you could also put these on the first bro day as well. And then wrist extensions and flexions, not 100% required, but I do think that if you want to build up your forearms, this is a good idea. Now, I think it's also important to note that this is just a starting point. You still have to be observant. You still have to keep a training log. You still have to try to progress over time. I suggest using a double progression, adding reps till you get to the top of the rep range, then adding weight, then adding reps, then weight, etc. But you have to treat this as a starting point and realize that it might evolve over time. As your biology evolves, your mentality must also evolve. Also, I highly encourage you to check out the full program on Boost Camp. It's really amazing what they've been doing. The coaches on here, it's just a who's who of, of badassery, you know, no fake naturals, just people that I highly respect in the industry. And so if you're going to use an app to track your progress, this is the one. Also, let me know if you have any questions about the program. And if you decide to run it, let me know how things go and check in in a couple months when you have gotten all of the gains. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.